yesterday and all week. You know, every week I go to pray, and after I preach it Sunday morning service, I go to pray and seeking the Lord as to what what He wants me to preach next Sunday. You know, and all through the week I'm listening for Him, and usually I get it on Saturday or Sunday. You know, and yesterday I got the words God's provision, kind of going along with with what we've been going through. Uh, you know, I just want to share at the end of my message. I'm going to share a testimony of, of uh, uh, what's been happening with us. But uh, you know, I, I heard God's provision, and so I began to uh, pray and seek Him as to Scripture and all, and how He wanted me to bring it. And, you know, all day yesterday, I just got God's provision. I never did get nothing else, and so during the night. I woke up this morning, and this is the scripture that he gave me to preach and preach with today on God's provision. Starting off with, and uh, uh, so it's uh, Malachi chapter three, and I'm going to start reading in verse six, and we're going to read through verse eighteen. But then a while ago, he dropped another verse in my heart that I want to read before we read that. So uh, turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1 and uh, verse 8. Does anybody know this verse before you get there? Huh? I want to see it. Shall not let the uh, word depart from your mouth. That's right. Joshua 1 8 says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then, then means after you've done what it says do, mm -hmm. then this will happen. Yeah, amen. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. All right, let's just go back over to Malachi chapter 3 now. I want to read through all of this. You know, a lot of people want to say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, it is Old Testament. But I got news for you. The Old Testament didn't end when the New Testament began. Amen. Jesus didn't do away with the Old Testament. He just added to it. He completed it. Amen. Amen. Everything that's in the New in the Old Testament, we can apply in our lives. It's there for us. It's there for us to learn from. It's there for us to, to do as it says do. It's not something that we're going to throw away. Right. Yes, the New Testament, we have a new and better covenant. That's the Old Covenant. This is the New Covenant. Amen. We're under grace now, but grace don't give us the right to not do what God said do. Amen. 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 All right, you think you're in uh, uh, Malachi chapter three. We're going to start wording, wording. We're going to start reading <laughs> in uh, verse six. He says, "I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed." Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God, yet you rob me? You ask, but you ask, how do we rob you? In tithe and offerings, you in tithes and in offerings, you are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Let that sink in. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord. And the storehouse is the church. Mm -hmm. That's where you're to bring the tithe, into the storehouse. That's it. He's saying it right there. And the tithe, a tithe is a tenth. 
Amen. I, you, you, you may sit here, you sit, be sitting there saying, well, he's just trying to preach money in his pocket. No, I'm not. And I'm going to cover that after a while just in, in Philippians chapter 4 on what Paul said. I mean, it jumped out to me this morning. The reason that God wants men of God, preachers, to preach this stuff is because He wants you to be in the line where He can bless you. That's yeah. right. But you know what? you got preachers every Sunday morning, they'll refuse to preach this to their congregation because they think that somebody might leave. Somebody might get offended. And you know what? They're going to stand before God one day and He's going to say, why didn't you tell my people what they needed to know so that I could bless them? Come on. That's right. Well, you know what? I'm not going to hear Him say that to me. That's right. When I stand before Him, He's going to say, very well, son, you did good that morning. You did good with your congregation. You told them what I wanted you to tell them. And what I tell you, then you do with it what you will. That's right. Amen. But it's not on me anymore. Yeah. That's right. You can't go before him and say, well, Brother Larry didn't tell me that. Amen. That's it. I can't go before him and say, Brother Stan didn't tell me that. Brother Kenneth didn't tell me that. Brother Kenneth Hagin didn't tell me that. Brother so and so didn't tell me that. Whoever preachers I you know, I said Stan and Kenneth because those, those are the ones that's been my pastors for the last 20 years until I started pastoring. Amen? Amen. And neither one of them, I because I, I've heard it from them from time to time. They preached it. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to preach it. You call Mr. Jim? Okay. I seen y'all hunkered up there. I thought maybe you was cold. We don't, do you need me to turn this fan off? No, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, let's read on here. What chapter are we on? Oh, uh, we're in chapter 3 of Malachi. In verse 10. 10? Okay. Yes, sir. Bring your whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that you will not even have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. I like the way the, the uh, King James says this. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for you. This is the NIV I'm reading out of. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your field will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. You have said harsh things against me, says the Lord, yet you ask, what have we said against you? You have said it is fruitful, it is not for it is Futile. It is futile to serve God. What did we gain by carrying out His requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? Now, I want to stop right there for a minute because every one of us has been guilty of doing that very thing. Oh, me, yeah. Every one of us has been guilty. You know, we, we go through some little trial in our life, you know, and, you know, because uh, I know, because we've done it before. Mm -hmm. We've been there. You know, we'll be, you know, like I shared a while back, you know, about tithing, you know, we'd, we'd go to tithing and then all hell would break loose. And, well, what good did it do? It don't do a bit of good. You know, you go to tithing and you, meh, 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 you know, and, and it don't do a bit of good. Our words is against God. Yeah. My words was against Him. Yeah. It don't do a bit of good. All oh, them preachers get up there and preach all this blah, blah, blah. It don't do. All they want me to do is just bring my money in there and give it to them. Oh, me. I bet you every one of us has said something or thought it in our hearts. I have. I'm guilty of that. But I have forgiven of that. And I've been redeemed. 
Amen. And I repented. Amen. And it ain't on my slate no more. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it don't come out my mouth no more. Every time I put money in a plate, I ain't giving it to no man. I'm putting it in there, trusting God he's going to bless it. I don't care what that guy does with it because it ain't, that's between him and God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm giving it to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I ain't even got to my notes. <laughs> it's, his, it's his anyway. That's right. It's his. Yeah. That's right. Let's see here. But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly the evildoers prosper and even those who challenge God escape. Then those who fear the Lord will talk with each other and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored His name. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty. In the day when I make up my treasured possessions, I will spare them just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. And you will gain, you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked between those who serve God and those who do not. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, when that, if you keep on serving God and you keep on doing the things that, that's right and you keep on doing what Joshua 1.8 said, don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Keep it in your heart. Meditate on it day and night. You will have success. You will be prosperous. Amen. And they will look at you one day and they will say, they will see that 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 guy serves God and that guy don't. Yeah. They'll call me blessed and they'll call him cursed. Amen. And I've seen it come into pass. I'm seeing it come to pass in my life. Day after day after day, I'm seeing things like that happen. Why? Because I've been found faithful. You say, well, you're proud of yourself. I'm quoting what God told me. Amen. That's all. And for me to deny that I'm not blessed, to act like I'm humble, then I'm denying what God has done for me. And I'm saying, well, you know, I'm trying to be, I'm, I'm, I'm letting pride come in. Come on. I'm getting prideful there. False humility. You false humility, that's right. Anyway. God's provisions. And the subject is God's blessings and His provisions. Are you blessed? Or are you cursed? Cursed. Cursed. I remember when I was cursed, but did not know it. I can remember that. I mean, I remember when we, you know, was was uh, uh, just just going along, and you know, I had it in my mind I was not going to give a penny, no, nowhere. I, I, you know, we'd go to church, but I, the offering plate passed in front of me, and I let her just go right on. Like I said a while ago, I wasn't going to give my money to no, no preacher. You know, I had in my heart that I was given to man. I wasn't giving him a church. And I was cursed, man. I mean, every time we every time we try to get ahead, something would come against us. What tithing? Every little old thing went wrong, vehicles breaking down. Man, I mean, you know, when we got married we had more car trouble. Uh you know, I had a truck, she had a car, we ain't been married five months. About three months, I think yeah. it was. She let my baby sister drive her car that she had when we got married, drive it down to the dump, we was living in Reeves. She wrecked the thing and towed it. There we was, back to my pickup, you know, right away, man, you know. And it just, it just spiraled downhill for years like that with us. Mm -hmm. 
And then in 1988, we were kind of, you know, we was we were so-called Christians. You know, we had a Christian family. We raised our kids in a Christian home, so to speak. But we, you know, we was far from what we are now. Uh, we had a form of godliness, but we sure denied the power thereof, you know. Yeah. And, and like I say, like I've said before, you know, we got from I got from mad at churches. I wouldn't further try to invite me to church. I'd get some mad at him. I almost want to tell him go to hell. I think I think a lot of people felt that way though, too. Why did you go to different churches? And well, they, they, they do, you know, because they've been a lot to, you know, some other. You're disgusting. But 1988, we, we you know, God God had patience with us, and and we began to get into the faith movement, and we began to get some teaching and all, you know, and, and, uh, and, and so we started going to church. And we got faithful in going to church. That's one thing you need to be. You need to be faithful in what you do. We got faithful in going to church. My kids, and I, you know, I tell them this now, you know, when they would get up on Sunday mornings, they didn't get up and come in there and say, are we going to church this morning? No, they got up and said, what, what can I wear to church this morning? Because it wasn't no question about whether or not we was going to church. We was going to church. We made that decision in 90-something, you know, and we started going to church. And, buddy, we started going. It was clockwork. You know, if something, if we didn't show up for something other, People was calling, why ain't y'all here? You know, what happened? You know, something wrong? You know, y'all having trouble? You know, like Brother Jim didn't show up last weekend, but, you know, I didn't know that he'd called Katie and told her he was going out to a different church. I don't have a problem with that. But you see, I know how faithful he is, and whenever he didn't show up, I was wondering, okay, is something wrong with him or something, you know? And she told me, no, he's, you know, he called. So all of y'all here are faithful. And like, if you don't show up, then I'm wondering, did you have trouble on the way here or something happened? You know? Yeah. Because yeah. y'all are faithful to be here. So when you're not here, we, we, something's going on. Anyway, I said all that to say, you know, we became faithful in church. Faithful beginning to go to church and all. And, and by doing that, we begin to get the Word in us. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you begin to get the Word in you, you're getting knowledge in you. And, and, and faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Yeah. When you get the Word of God in you and you begin to get faith in you, you begin to get set free. Amen. Amen. How's that scripture go? The, the, you shall know the, the truth and the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Right. But I like it. It's the truth that you know. Yeah. Set you free. Yeah. The truth shall set you free. A lot of people say that, but it's the truth you know that sets you free. And you act on it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But we begin to get the word in us. You know, and we begin to get the word that, hey, tithing is of the Lord. Tithing is God's thing, you know. I mean, we'd heard it all our life. I was raised Baptist, you know, so. You know, we'd heard a little bit about offering and okay, he was raised Baptist, uh, probably more devout than I was, you know, to a certain degree. You know, her her mama, you know, as far as I know, she still don't miss a, a Sunday service, you know. Uh, Molly, she still goes yes, real she feels yeah. good. You know, I mean, I remember when we met, man, her mama was, they went to church, you know. Yep. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, you know. They kind of remind me, Grandma and Abear and and Linda kind of remind me of Grandma and Walton and, you know, they, they're going to church, man, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's what I always thought about it. They're going to church on Sunday, you know. It's going to be there. And that's good. But anyway, we begin to get the Word in us. And we, come, we got to finding out about tithing. And how many of you know when you go to rubbing the hair on the dog back the wrong way, he gets uncomfortable. You know, his old hair will stand up. You don't like that. But you know how to fix that? When you're rubbing that hair on the dog back the wrong way? Go the right way. 
you turn that dog around and then keep rubbing the same way and the hair lays right back down. <laughs> <laughs> you still do it. You still rubbing the same way. You just turn the dog around, man. <laughs> you know, I turn the dog around. My hair laid down. I got a hold of tithe. We begin to tithe. Got pretty faithful with it. First one thing and another would come up. Bill would come do it. Well, we can't tithe this week. So, we back off. You know, and at the end of the week, we were still out of money, worse shape than we was before. And we was fussing, and fighting, and fighting. You know, most things that married people fight over is money and. That's right. <laughs> money and more money. It's the S word. Everybody ought to know. Not me. I, I'm sure <laughs> You used to buy it over. <laughs> it's not an issue anymore. Huh? Hey, man. Oh, moving right on the wrong. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> anyway, you know, we... We, we began to cut tithes, but we wasn't, we wasn't faithful in our tithes. You know, we would tithe and we wouldn't, and we'd tithe and we wouldn't, and we'd tithe and we wouldn't. And, and it, it just kept, it kept us from being in the blessing aisle. It kept us in the cursed aisle. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Until one day, I don't remember, it was in the late 90s. It was after we went to Rama even. Or maybe while we was up there. We, we just, one day we said, I don't care what happens. We're bringing a tithe into the storehouse. We're going to be tithing a tenth of our earnings. Amen. And from that day on, it was like when we decided we are going to be going to church. And we got faithful in it. And we got faithful with our tithing. And I'm not, I'm, you know, I could stand here and say, man, when I started tithing, it was like everything just turned out roses every time I turned around. But I would be lying to you. <laughs> because the minute that you get obedient to doing what God has called you to do, there is an enemy that don't want you to get set free. There is an enemy that's going to try to take away what you got from God. Yeah. Immediately he will come and start testing you to see if you're going to be faithful in what you've decided that you're going to do. Yeah. Immediately he'll come. Immediately. But I'm telling you, if it's sunk in, if it's planted in that good soil, it, before long, it'll start producing. And before long, he'll start losing. And you'll begin to see results. Now, with us, it's taken several years. For one reason, sometimes we become our own worst enemy about things. You know, we do things that he's told us and told us not to do, and we're going to do it anyway, you know. You, it may be that he's telling you, don't spend that $10 right now. And you know it in your heart, but yet, well, I want a 7-Up so bad, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> That's just all I can think about, you know. You know but you know what I'm saying. Power tools. When you, when you, <laughs> power tools. <laughs> We all got our hang-ups, huh, Brother Jim? <laughs> I can kind of identify with that. I like tools, too. I like to buy tools. But you, but you hear what I said? God knows what's up ahead. Yeah. And if you listen to Him, you know, you may think you got to have this today. But He's saying, don't buy it today. Because He knows tomorrow you're going to need to buy a new tire. Amen? That's it. Amen. Yeah. Oh, but I need this dress today. I can't do without these shoes today. 
I got to have these blue jeans today. You know? Listen to what the horns, the, the horn, the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes my tongue don't work good with my mind. Listen to what the Lord is, is ministering to your heart about. Yeah. Amen? Because like I said, we can be our own worst enemy. And He's trying to bless us. And every time He does, we're doing something that's causing it to fail. Well, that don't, that don't mean that He's not doing it. We just, we're not, we're not doing right to let His blessings flow on us because I believe with all my heart that where it says here, bring the whole of the tithe into the storehouse and, and <clears throat> that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord. And see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing on you that you will not be able to contain it. That's God talking. He's not lying. That's right. Well, then there's a reason why the blessings that should be coming upon us is not uncontainable to us right now. And I dare say every one of us in here we we blessed. I consider myself blessed, but it hadn't got uncontainable yet. Because I tell you, there's still room in there. <laughs> there's still room. And, and 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 money's not the blessing to God. Money's just a product of the blessing. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Money is not the blessing to God. It's just a product. We need to get that. Verse verses eight and nine. Verses eight and nine. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. That tells us that if we if we are not doing what God has said us said for us to do, then, uh, in the front of the book there we heard and we read in uh, Joshua one eight that this book of the law shall not depart from your eyes, meditate on it day and night, then you'll be successful. This is still part of the book of the law. This is still part of the book that God's talking to us. This is still part of what we need to be doing. And if we don't do it, we're not going to be successful. We're going to be cursed. And He tells us right there we are. Yeah. Huh? Disobedient. Disobedient. But you know what? He don't want us to do it as an obligation. He wants us doing it because we love Him. We obey Him because we love Him. Yeah. Not because we have to. Not because we're scared He's going to slap us upside the head if we don't. You know, I was kneeling right there earlier and, and, and the Lord showed me something. So many of us have this, this, this uh, when God does something good for us, we get all excited and happy and, and man, we just praising Him. But then when we when we ain't gotten you know he didn't he, ha he hasn't done nothing good you know which I don't know when that ever is but you know it, we're kind of down and, and and it's looking kind of glim and bleep in front of us and you know and wondering why he hadn't done what we need him to do you know and we're kind of you know but what the Lord showed me was are we serving him? For what he can do for us, Come on. are we serving him because we love him? Yeah. yeah. And he brought those grandkids of mine to to my mind, to my heart. You know, we bought a lot of Christmas gifts and all for the kids, the grandkids this this year, and and they was real happy about it and all. But I want you to know, those grandkids, if we hadn't have bought them nothing, they'll still come running across that field. 
You know, can we come to your house? Can we come to your house? Just because we're Momo and Papa, and they just love to be over here, it don't matter. You know, yeah, we give them candy, but that ain't why they want to be over here. They just want to come because we don't give them candy a lot of time. They just want to be here. Bailey just wants to be in her presence. She just wants to bask in her presence. I can understand. I do too. <laughs> you know, such beauty. just have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with you and there ain't nothing too little that he's not interested in it. That's right. I mean he knows the very hair on the top of your head. They may be few or they may be many but he knows every hair that's there. I didn't say I was bald. didn't say I had few or many. There may be few, there may be many but he knows every one of them. That's right. Amen. Amen. Over in Philippians, Paul, you know, like I said earlier, when you give, you're not giving to man, you're giving to God. And just set that in your heart. That's what that's who you give it to. I want to read this about where, where uh, cause you know, we always we everybody knows Philippians 419. Mm -hmm. Can somebody quote it for me? My God shall supply all my needs. But you know what? There's conditions with that. Yep. Oh brother, it don't say that. It does too. You qualify. You either disqual you either qualify or you disqualify for him to meet your needs. Yep. Let's read here. We're going to start in, in verse 14 of chapter 4. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. He was a missionary. He was on mission trips. He needed support. He needed to get from one place to the other. You know, he might have to buy a new pair of sandals or something. <laughs> uh, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. Y'all remember when I started this message, I said, I, I don't want to be held accountable and I want, I want you to get in the line of the blessings. That's why I'm preaching what I'm preaching today. That's why I'm that's where I'm going with this. And this is what I wanted you to hear. Paul said, Paul has said, not that, that I am looking for a gift, but I'm looking for what's going to be good for you. What's going to be counted to your credit. Amen. What's going to put you in the line of the blessing? 
and, and get you out of the line of the cursing. Yeah. Amen. 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 So you see, I'm not going to be held accountable when the Lord says, why didn't you give? You can't say, well, Brother Larry never taught me that. Amen? Amen. Okay. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from whatever, whoever that fellow is, the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Their offering was pleasing to God. They was giving as unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. And then he said, and my God will meet all of your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Why? Because they qualify. Yeah. Paul could say that. You qualify. You're in the blessing line. You're not in the curse line. You're in the blessing line. You qualify. Amen? Amen. So here's what I want to say. When things begin to go wrong, four things. Keep trusting Him. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on Him. Keep your mouth and your tongue on Him. Yeah. That's, a, that's one of the most important things right there is keep your mouth and your tongue on Him. You say, what do you say? I'm saying don't go against Him with your mouth. Yeah. Don't go to wonder. Don't go to doubting with your mouth. Your head may be doubting a lot of times. Don't give word to it. Yeah. <clears throat> give word to only what's in your heart. Let faith be in your heart. And speak what's in your heart. Speak it out your mouth what's in your heart. Don't speak out your mouth what's in your mind. Because see, the devil's planting thoughts up there. Oh, yeah. And he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy what, he, what you've gotten from God. Yeah. So keep your mouth and your tongue on him. And he will turn it around for you. Yes, he Amen. will. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now I want to share a little testimony about the things that's been